Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a quick and easy exponential equation. 3 to the power x plus 3 to the power x equals 6 to the power x. That kind of looks simple, right? But we're not, we're not just going to go for real solutions, we're going to try to find all solutions to this equation. Alright, so let's see how we can solve this problem first of all. When you add two exponential numbers with the same base, can we add the bases? Or can we add the exponent? In this case, the bases were added, obviously. 3 plus 3 equals 6. But is this always true? For example, if you have a to the x plus a to the x, does this always equal 2a to the x? Think about it for a moment and then see uh, what you get. But we're going to do the following. We have the 3 to the power x twice, right? So we're going to write it as 2 times 3 to the power x, which is equal to 6 to the power x. With exponential equations, we kind of need to go off of bases or exponents. In this case, the exponents are the same. So let's go ahead and bring those two things together. Divide both sides, in other words, by 3 to the power x to isolate the constant. And then 3 to the x is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with this. How do you divide two powers or exponentials with the same exponent? So in other words, you have something like a to the n divided by b to the n. And this can be written as a over b to the power n, right? Of course, we're talking about uh, these numbers being real. What happens in the complex case? That's a different story. But from here, we get the following. 6 to the x divided by 3 to the x can be written as 6 over 3 to the power x. And that happens to equal 2. And 6 divided by 3, as far as I know, is 2. So this is 2 to the power x equals 2 which is a very easy equation to solve, right? Why did we even make a video of this? Because we're going to look at all the solutions. Now, from here, the real solution that I'm getting is x equals 1, because this is 2 to the first power. If the bases are equal and they're not 1, negative 1, or 0, x equals 1 is going to work, right? Okay, let's go ahead and look at it from a different perspective, and then we're going to come back to this value. So... Whenever you're trying to solve an equation, especially an exponential equation for all solutions, including the complex ones, you want to complexify the numbers. In this case, we can go ahead and just complexify the 2. And to the 2 on the left-hand side, we can actually do something like this. We can write the 2 as e to the power ln 2, can't we? And then from here, we're going to place 2 with that on the left-hand side. So it's going to be, wow, that was quick, e to the ln 2 to the power x equals 2, which I'm going to write as follows, 2 times 1. But 1 is going to be replaced by something. Now think about 1 as a complex number. Obviously, you can represent it in infinitely many forms. But basically, the main idea is its distance from 0 is 1 unit, so its modulus is 1. And the theta, the angle that it makes, is 0 or 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. So we can write 1 as e to the power 2 pi ni, where n is an integer. Make sense? So here we can replace this 1 with that, which is this 1. So it's going to be e to the power 2 pi ni. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and erase this because this kind of looks confusing. And now we have the following equation. Make sense so far? Now we're going to go ahead and multiply the exponents here. e to the power x ln 2. We've got to be a little careful because this doesn't always work. So a to the power b to the power c is not always a to the power bc with x, um, complex numbers. Especially uh, if c is an integer and the base is positive, it's going to work. But there are some restrictions. Anyways, so from here we get e to the power x ln 2 equals 2 times e to the power 2 pi and i. And guess what we're going to do next? We're going to natural log both sides. And when we do, we can go ahead and bring this down because ln e is 1. Make sense? So let's go ahead and ln both sides. And then we're going to get this times ln e, which is 1, by the way. So it's going to be x ln 2 equals. Now, this is a product. How do you ln a product? Hopefully, you do know that 
ln of a times b can be written as ln of a plus ln of b. Right? Okay. Now we can go ahead and write this as ln 2 plus ln e to the power 2 pi n i. And then, of course, you're going to move this 2 pi n i to the front, and ln e is going to be 1 one more time. So this can be written as actually x ln 2 equals ln 2 plus 2 pi and i. You can also think of it this way. If z can be written as r e to the i theta, then ln z is just going to be ln r plus i theta. And of course, I'm kind of talking about the principal branch. Obviously, you can also add multiples of 2 pi to this. So write this as i times theta plus 2 pi k. Make sense? Okay. Anyways, that's basically how you can log both sides because we're talking about the, nat um, the complex logarithm and uh, the real logarithm. But they happen to be the same thing, sort of. Okay, anyways, so let's go ahead and erase this rule. You hopefully know that. And now, from this equation, what, what are we getting? We want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide everything by ln2. And when we do... Actually, we're going to get something nice because ln2 divided by ln2 is equal to 1. Does that ring a bell? Let's see. ln2 is going to cancel out here. x equals 1 plus 2 pi n over ln2 multiplied by i. Now, it's important to be able to write x in this form because this is the standard form. And as you remember, hopefully, uh, it, the standard form is a plus bi. And... That is actually the fun part about this, right? But take a look at the values of n. n is an integer, so it can be positive, negative, or 0. What happens if n is equal to 0? We end up with x equals 1, which is the very real solution we found at the beginning. Remember, when we solved this equation, we set the exponents uh, equal to each other because the bases were the same. And then from there, we got x equals 1. You remember that? 2 to the x equals 2, and x equals 1. So the real solution is actually part of the complex solution family because there are infinitely many complex solutions, as you can see here, and can be replaced with any integer, and you're going to get a solution every time. For example, if n is equal to 1, you're going to get x equals 1 plus 2 pi over ln 2, multiplied by i. And you can actually check that. Go ahead and plug it in here, right? Or if you want to do that here, that's fine too. Replace x with that, and you should be getting 2 as a result, right? So there are infinitely many solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you Next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.